Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. I post new budgeting videos twice every week. That is usually on Mondays and then again on Fridays, but then in the month of December I will be posting an extra video every Wednesday. So if that is content that you are interested in, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you could get notified for when I post new videos. It really, really helps out my channel. So today I am doing my annual budget. Um, and I did actually create a template for this um, that I have linked down below. It's completely free and I thought it was pretty easy to use. Um, I did actually do some like mock annual budgets on my own like before this, but I did wanna make sure that I put it into my bullet journal so that at the end of the year I have like a record for it to see just like what my plan was at the beginning of the year and how I did. So yeah, this is my annual budget for 2022. I think it is pretty easy to use um, and the reason why is because I have like a little legend up here. So essentially all you have to do is fill out like what your different sources of income are, the frequency, so whether or not you're paid like weekly, bi-weekly, and it just tells you like how many times that you would need to um, cover calculate the total. So it's like, for example, if you were paid semi-monthly, you would have to times your semi-monthly amount by 24 and then et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, this is linked down below if you want to use it. But yeah, I'm doing it in my bullet journal. But as you can see, just from like a quick glance, I've already filled out all the numbers, but I still do want to walk you through everything. And that's just because this video ended up being incredibly long when I filled it out on camera. Um, it was over 25 minutes and I just didn't really want to post a video that long. So I wanted to redo it just and try to go as quickly as possible so that I'm not taking up too much of your all time. So anyways, yeah, let's get started. All right. So the first thing that you always list out for my like regular budgets and on this budget too is the same as your income. So for me, I am a salary and employee and because my frequency is weekly I at times my weekly amount by 52 which totals to $41,496. Um, I'm also expecting to get a work bonus this year. This isn't a performance bonus like the one that I got in November. This is just like an annual bonus that everybody at my company gets. We didn't actually get one last year but we did get one the year before that but we didn't get one last year because of COVID but we do we will be getting one this year. Um, they already told us they just didn't tell us the amount yet. So yeah, that's an annual bonus and it's about $500. And then I'm also expecting to um, file my tax refund. I always do. Um, and that's an annual um, refund as well. And I'm expecting to get around $1,000. That's what I've gotten the last few years or around that. So $1,000 is pretty um, typical. So when you add those three things up together, that's a total of $42,996. The one piece of advice that I would have when you're filling out an annual budget is because the annual budget is not really meant to reconcile your checkbook or anything, it's just meant to see things at a very high level. If you are a variable income individual or family, the one piece of advice that I would have is do not budget too high and you also don't budget too low. So if you typically make more money in December or you make less money in December, don't budget at the low end of things or the high end of things because in that way, if you're budgeting on the low end of things and you can still make all your numbers work, it might seem that like, even if you're not doing very well with your savings, you're ending up with a lot of money at the end of the year. And then also if like you're budgeting on the very high end of things and then you don't end up bringing in that much money, you might get discouraged. So yeah, just try to be as realistic as possible when it comes to your income. Anyways, the next thing that I have on my budget template are my fixed expenses. And if you are not new to my channel, you will know that I, on my regular monthly budgets, separate out fixed and variable expenses a little bit differently than a lot of other people on YouTube. So for me, a fixed expense is something that I have to pay. So regardless of whether or not I necessarily have the money. So technically, like if I had no money in my checking account, I would be able to like not buy groceries. Um, would I want to do that? No, but it's a possibility. So for your fixed expenses, I would just consider them for the sake of an annual budget, the things that you definitely have to pay. So for me, all of my fixed expenses that I have are monthly. I couldn't really think of anything that I have like an annual fee for. So that's why I just listed these. Honestly, it might change as the year progresses, but for now I'm pretty confident with these. But again, the annual budget is really not meant to reconcile your checking account. It's just to try to give you like a very basic overview for your spending for the year. So anyways, the first thing that I have is my rent and my rent is $1,200 a month. So that is a total of $14,400 for the year. Next I have hydro or electricity 
electricity that I budget around $70 a month for, um, and it always does fluctuate, but still that's fine. <laughs> um, and I budget $840 for the year. The next is internet, which is $60 for a total of $720 for the year. Tenants insurance is $25 a month, so $300 for the year. Car insurance is $120, so $1440 for the year. My phone bill, um, that's actually an exciting one because it did decrease because I did change my phone plan at the end of November. So that's now only $57 compared to what it was before at $75. So now it is a total of $684 for the year. Um, next I have Netflix for $144, um, Spotify for $120, and iCloud which is $24. And it is interesting to see when you're doing an annual budget just how much you're actually spending on subscriptions because on top of this I also have an annual an Amazon Prime subscription. So like when you add all that up together, like I'm spending a, almost $350 on subscriptions, which does seem like a lot, but yeah, I'm not willing to cancel any of these. I use them all. So it is an expense that I am confident with, but anyways, or not confident, comfortable with. Anyways, when you add up all of my fixed expenses, you get a total of $18,672 for fixed. The next thing I have are my variable expenses. And if you do a cash budget, this is where I would recommend putting in your cash expenses that you have. So for me, I have four variable expense categories that I always do my weekly check-ins for, and that's groceries, gas, dining out, and miscellaneous. I used to do gas and miscellaneous monthly, but in the new year, I'm planning on revamping my budget a bit. So the first one I have is groceries, and all of these expenses I do do weekly now. And groceries in the new year, I'm gonna start giving myself $50 a week. This is more than I've been giving myself in the past, but truthfully going into 2022, I don't wanna be focused as much on my grocery spending um, and feeling like guilty and stuff when I go over. Food prices have gone up a lot and I actually read an article recently that they're gonna go up even more. So I just wanna be confident with my, or comfortable with my um, grocery spending going into the new year, which is why I have upped it. So $50 a week is equal to $2,600 a year. Gas, I did up that back in November. And I mean, if gas prices increase or decrease, then I'll adjust this. But for now I'm budgeting $40 a week. So that's $2,080. Dining out, I'm still doing $10 a week for $520 total for the year. Year. And then miscellaneous is the one that I'm making the most of an adjustment to because I used to only give myself $50 for the entire month. I am now going to be giving myself $20 per week in miscellaneous. So that's a total of $1,040 for the year. I'm going to plan to sort of um, essentially if I'm asked to like go out for dinner or like I plan make plans, I'm going to try to like keep my dining out and miscellaneous budget to a, this total. So like $30 a week. So I just, I give myself a little bit more um, room um, with my budget. The one piece of advice that I have if you're setting up an annual budget when it comes to your variable expenses is be realistic. Don't set up an annual budget if your typical grocery spending is $200 a week and say, oh, I'm only going to spend $20 a week in groceries. No, you're, that's not going to happen. You're not going to do that. So just try to be as, as realistic as possible. It is a good time to see what would happen if you like made small adjustments. Cause like if your regular grocery budget was $20 a week, you might be able to cut that back to $180. So that's $20 over the entire year. That would be a thousand dollars that you'd be saving. So again, it's a good time to like make little adjustments, but don't go too um, big. Just make, just be realistic with what you're spending. So yeah, that's it for variable for a total of, I think I said this $6,240. The next thing up here, I have my sinking funds. So I have a, quite a few sinking funds and I do most of my sinking funds monthly. So the first one I have is gifts and I'm doing $50 a month for a total of $600 for the year. Next I have Christmas for $100 a month, so $1,200 for the year. Electronics, I'm doing $20 a month, so $240 for the year. Hair, I'm doing $10 a month, so $120 for the year. Next is car maintenance, and this is one that I am increasing quite a bit from last year. So I'm doing $50 a month, so a total of $600 a year, which would be really nice to have at the end of the year. Um, next, I have tires. So my tires are actually something that I only have January, February, March, and April to save for, so four months. So that's why I just wrote four months in there. So it's going to be four months times $250 a month for a total of 1000 um, and then next I have Amazon Prime and I did put 750 for Amazon Prime because essentially what I do is between household and Amazon Prime, I do $5 one month and $10 the next. That's because I am located in Canada and in Canada we do not have dollar bills. So it's essentially works out to $15 per month between the both of them. So that's $90 a year 
each. The next thing I have is YouTube and I just stuff $5 a month into YouTube. I would like to get things like a microphone and like a better camera arm and like there's a few things that I would really like to buy for my channel. But because this is a hobby, I don't really wanna be throwing a ton of money into that right now. So yeah, $5 a month for $60 for the year. And then finally, I have one annual sinking fund that I'm planning to do um, and that's for weddings. So I have two weddings that I have to go for um, go to in the summer. So my plan is actually in July when I have a five paycheck month to cash flow this sinking fund solely with that extra paycheck in July. So that's $600 that I need to save for those weddings and that's just essentially two gifts because I don't have a significant other so I don't have to pay for like a significant other gift. So I'm just gonna do $200 per wedding and then I'm saving an extra $200 and that's because at one of the weddings I do have to um, stay at a hotel so I'm splitting that with my sister because my sister is also going to that wedding. And then just like, and the wedding, the hotel room for reference isn't very expensive because they got like a discounted room rate. Um, but then yeah, the other $200 will be for like the room and then maybe if I have to take an Uber to the one wedding, just like little things like that. So yeah, I'm doing $600 for those two weddings. So when you add up all of your my sinking funds for the year, that is $4,600. Another piece of advice that I would like to say for sinking funds, if you're setting them up for the year, sinking funds are really a great tool, but that being said, sinking funds are still spending. So don't necessarily consider your sinking funds as like money that you're saving because yes, you're saving it, but you're saving it for a purpose. So like this Christmas, sinking fund like in the end of the year I'll have $1,200 in it but I don't have an extra $1,200 that I can go and put towards a debt payment no yes it's savings but it's it's savings for a purpose I need to spend that money on Christmas so yeah don't get too caught up in sinking funds especially especially if you are in debt because I really do think you should be trying to prioritize your debt Again, that's my personal opinion. You can obviously do whatever you want. Personal finance is personal. It's just one thing. Try not to get caught up in sinking funds, especially when you're first starting out, if you're starting out a budget. All right, the next category that I have are, is debt slash savings. So for me, I am prioritizing debt for the year and I am confidently hopeful <laughs> that I will only have two credit cards going into the new year. So what I've actually listed here is the annual amount that I will be paying towards interest. So if you look at my Tangerine credit card, it has about $7,000 on that card and the interest rate is around 20%. And then my Scotiabank card has around $3,000 on it. And again, the interest rate is around 30%. So if you times that um, 7,000 and that 3,000 by 20%, you're left with 1,400 and 600. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because I wanna calculate exactly what I'm paying towards interest. So this is like the category, category that shows me like the carrying cost of my debt. It will vary very, very likely be lower than this because as you make payments to the principal, your interest charges do go down, but this is just a very easy way to calculate roughly what you'll be paying in um, interest. So anyways, yeah, that is it for my debt. So my total debt cost is $200 a month. And again, I'm sure that some of you are thinking like that's a little bit odd because I usually put $400 a month to my debt at a minimum and I am gonna continue doing that. This is just again, what the interest costs are for my debt. Now, the fun part is down at the bottom where you calculate your balance. So the first thing that you do is you list out your income. So again, I'm taking my income from over here, which is 42,996. Then I have my fixed expenses, which is from here. So 18,672. So that's a total of 43.43% of my income. Next, I have my variable expenses, which is a total of $6,040, which is a total of 14.51% of my income. Next is sinking funds for $4,600, which is 10.70% of my income. Then my minimum debt payments are $2,000, which is 4.65% of my income. So when you subtract all of these expenses minus from my income, I am left with $11,484, which is 26.71% of my income. And that's essentially what I have left over. And that is what I'm hoping to put towards extra debt payments for the year, which is why I think it's very important and very also like, it's just, it's cool to do annual budgets because you can really see the progress that you're making. And even if you're not in debt, it's interesting because maybe instead of debt and savings, you have like retirement savings here and you're putting in $500 a month, but maybe you have $20,000 left at the end of the year. So maybe that means that you can put some extra money into a vacation sinking fund and you'll still be in the positive. And then maybe also too, if you're doing $500 a month for retirement, maybe you can up that to $1,000 a month for retirement, which is why I think it really is useful for anybody to do an annual budget. Also, if you're negative here, you know that you need to make adjustments somewhere. So you either have to cut down on your variable spending or maybe stop 
spending as much on sinking funds, but then also like maybe you need to try to get a part-time job and make a little bit of extra money. So anyways, yeah, that is it for today. I'm really hoping this video isn't too long because again, I I didn't want to film, I didn't want to post a 25 minute video on an annual budget. But anyways, yeah, I hope you guys liked this. And again, if you're interested in doing this yourself, I did create just like a PDF download and then hopefully someone will get use of it out of it. But yeah, it is a really cool way to do this. And I did do multiple versions of this, just like sketching it out myself, but ultimately like I'm confident-ish in what I've got in my journal. So yeah, I'm cu very curious to see at like the end of 2022 what I'm able to accomplish based on this budget. So anyways, yeah, that is it for today. Um, my next video is going to be out on Wednesday and that will be my sinking fund video. So I didn't actually film a sinking fund video in November, but I did still like touch my sinking funds then. So I'm just sort of going to do a catch up video to show you everybody what I've done. And yeah, that's it. I hope you all have an amazing couple days and I will talk to you again on Wednesday. Bye everyone.